Hey everybody, welcome back to One Candle Paranormal Case Files. And as always, we are your hosts, Marcus D. And Vic Whaley. And come along with us, guys, as we talk about the greatest American haunting story. The Bell Witch. The Bell Witch haunting centers around the Bell family from Adams, Tennessee. Most notably, farmer John Bell and his youngest daughter, Betsy Bell. The hunting began late in the summer of 1817 when John Bell witnessed a strange creature making its way across his farmstead. The creature was described as having the body of a dog but the head of a rabbit. John fired off his rifle in the creature's direction, but it quickly vanished. Not long after that, activity began within his house. First with the sounds of knocking, the smacking of lips, and scratching, but it quickly escalated into more sinister things, such as pulling hair, pinching, feeling like you're being stuck with pins, and being slapped. A family friend told the Bells that they were dealing with a spirit, just like in the Bible. The apparition began to speak out loud and even have full-on conversations with members of the family. Often referring to John Bell Sr. as Old Jack, the witch would claim that she intended to kill him and signal this through curses, threats, and even afflictions on the family. But the Bell Witch wasn't always malicious. At times, she seemed to actually show kindness, especially towards Lucy. John Bell Sr.'s wife. She would often call her the most perfect woman to walk the earth and would even give Lucy fresh fruit and sing hymns to her. As the legend spread, then General and future President Andrew Jackson heard about it and traveled north to see the Bell Witch for himself. On the way while nearing his farmstead, his wagon ceased moving. Although his men could find no malfunction, the wheels just simply would not turn and the horses would not pull. After quite some time toiling with it, trying to get it to move, Andrew Jackson then declared that this must be the work of the Bell Witch, at which a disembodied voice told him that he may proceed, and that they'd see each other again that night. Later that night, one of Jackson's men was struck to the ground, convulsing, feeling as if struck by pins and needles all over his body. Jackson, according to the legend, was eager to stay and test this witch, but his men were eager to leave and return back to Nashville, and they were seen leaving early that morning. During the Bell Witch haunting, Betsy Bell became interested in a local boy named Joshua Gardner. The two intended to marry, much to the pleasure of many people in town, including her father, John Bell. Not everyone was happy with Betsy's and Joshua's engagement. The Bell Witch voiced her displeasure with the two trying to marry by incessantly taunting the two of them any time that they would try to find any alone time together. The tauntings became so bad that Betsy decided to end the engagement with Joshua Gardner. On December 20th, 1820, John Bell was found dead in his house. Nearby was found a vial of liquid of a color and consistency matching that of the liquid on his lips. The liquid was then given to the family cat, which quickly began to convulse and die. John Bell had died of poison. The spirit was supposedly then heard saying, I gave old Jack a big dose of that last night, which fixed him. Even at John Bell's funeral, which was one of the largest the county had ever seen, they were not allowed to mourn quietly, as the spirit made itself known, sing-songing and mocking the parishioners there, and continued to do so until the last person left the cemetery. But the Bell Witch haunting was far from over. In April of 1821, the Bell Witch returned to visit John Bell's widow, Lucy Bell, and told her that it would return to visit in seven years. And in 1828, it kept its promise. Though this time, most of its hauntings focused around John Bell Jr., who would claim that the entity would talk to them about things such as life, civilization, and Christianity, and a need for a mass spiritual reawakening. The entity would finally say farewell, but promising to visit John Bell's most distant descendant again in 107 years. And the year would have been 1935, and John Bell's closest descendant was Dr. Charles Bailey Bell. But Dr. Bell died in 1945, and it's unknown if he had any major encounters with the Bell Witch. Okay, there's a lot of stuff to this case, and it spends a lot of time. And a lot of it's pretty dense. In truth, we didn't even cover it all. But some of the things I thought were really interesting, uh, particularly from a lore angle, this hybrid animal that kind of kicks off the whole thing. 
What, do you have your thoughts on that? Dude, if I, if I was walking in a cornfield and saw a dog body with a rabbit's head, I'd be freaking out. I think the only thing missing was like sharp teeth and like jackalope and like antlers or something. I mean, his response was very natural to it. Yeah, and I would probably shoot, shoot it, it myself. Shoot it. I think we've said that in other videos where we said, I think my response would be, why didn't you try to shoot it? Yeah, I mean, lore is filled with all sorts of uh, combination creatures or chimeric creatures. And, and they come people from, trying to shoot them too. Eh, not so much that. But uh, these things represent a lot of different stuff. Some of them can be attached to witch-based folklore, uh, being familiars or devil servants, things along those lines. But they touch on a lot of other things. In some of the accounts of the story, this wasn't the only thing that was seen. In some of the accounts of the story, they say, and there were many other more unnatural things, impossible to describe things seen in the area. I think this somewhat might be linked to uh, the belief of the cave involving the Bell Witch. Yeah, there's a story in the, in the with the cave in which Betsy's in there with some friends, and this boy gets, like, stuck in the cave, and the Bell Witch actually, like, grabs the boy by the ankles and, like, lifts the boy out of the cave. Yeah, there's a lot of hauntings associated with this cave, and a lot of people believe that Whatever the Bell Witch was, it came from the cave, and when it would disappear, that's where it returned to. Almost as if the cave was some sort of portal. And things like that, that's not unheard of in the lore, particularly like, say, with fey folk or in uh, South American lore, that these, these underground places lead to special, mystical, supernatural sort of places. And I, I almost wonder if this could be like things coming out through that portal and bleeding into our world. For me, as a skeptic, one of the weirdest things that stuck out in the story is this uh, story about Andrew Jackson in which he comes down to see the Bell Witch. Now, when you guys will, will look at the story, any place that will actually cite its source, most of them all come back to this same book uh, by uh, Martin Ingram in 1894. It's the Authenticated History of the Bell Witch. And for me, that's a giant red flag for possibly the, val the validity of of the story about Andrew Jackson because you know Andrew Jackson was a presidential contender in the 1824 election and most of his his travels in the time are pretty well documented and if you think that you know if he traveled down in this particular part to see a witch you think that there would be other documentation to confirm this but it's it's really hard to source it also rings out as being a very folkloric sort of telling of the story with him first encountering it on the road and then him having this verbal exchange with it and then uh, one of his men getting attacked and even being shown as um, someone who's spreading a falsehood and being a boaster and then being punished for being a boaster. And if you want to get the full story on it, you guys can look it up yourself. I, I, lo I love the, the stories, uh, his exclamation. It's like, this is a general in the United States Army and his wheels lock up and he's supposed to go, it's a witch. Like I don't know if they I don't know if they promote people to generals if that's maybe their first response to wheels locking up. And, and another thing that made me think that this is a very folkloric sort of story is, in in the account, almost every time that Jackson says something, he starts with, with "by the eternal" and then makes his statement, which just seems very odd. In in 1824 was this hugely, like corrupt, nasty election between Andrew Jackson. And John Quincy Adams, like, wouldn't John Quincy Adams love to use the phrase, how can he be president? Jackson lost a battle to a witch. Like, come on. But beyond that part of the story, what, what do you think? One of the things that I did like about the Bell Witch story is the several times in this story, you will see people showing up to try to challenge the Bell Witch and trying to entice a response out of it. Um, many times when you guys watch stories like Ghost Hunters or Taps or other sorts of, or any real, you know, group of paranormal investigators that go out to a particular area, they're trying to get the entity to respond. And in the Bell Witch stories, there's several encounters in which the entity, when challenged, will actually meet the challenge and excel at it. One of the family friends uh, that comes to visit it, you know, tries to challenge the validity of the witch, and she starts making these statements about his family back in England. And then when he leaves, and, and the story goes that he actually talks to them, he writes back saying that it was true, that she did actually leave, go converse with his family, and and was able to discern this information. And another story, she's able to, the Bell Witch is able to 
retell two sermons that were told in a day miles apart, word for word. You know, and then you also have the story about Andrew Jackson that we just talked about. Just several stories of it being challenged, but it coming to, to meet that challenge and, and responding to being enticed. Okay, guys, it's time for one of our favorite parts where we get to give our thoughts. What, what do you have for us, Marcus? To me, I always try to think of what's the most plausible possible story in this. And in The Bell Witch, most people's accounts of The Bell Witch come from Ingram's work. And Ingram's work comes from not any of the original sources themselves. It comes from a third-hand source. I believe it was Betsy's son's son who, who, who heard it from Betsy. And, you know, I try to think about a scenario that what makes sense, you know, like a, an entity that this girl and this guy fall in love together, but the entity doesn't want her to, they split up, and then it kills your father. I'm like, well, what makes maybe a little bit more sense? This is a, a wealthy landowner that wants to make sure his daughter gets married off. He wants her to marry Joshua Gardner. Maybe she doesn't want to. So maybe she creates this Bell Witch story, and then you know as a reason to not marry this guy then kills her father so that she doesn't have anybody you know in her way to marry who she wants and then she's left to tell the tale about how it happened to her kids about what had happened i don't know what do you what do you think Vic? i think there has to be more to uh to the story than just fabrication i mean a lot of people seem to have been involved and it was very big in the community I think that there must be a much larger carnal truth to it. I think something strange was happening at the house, and I think the cave is definitely involved. But one of the things where I break from the traditional lore, I don't think that this is a ghost situation. It exhibits too many characteristics that are non-ghostly. Many parts of the lore will show ghosts having an extended amount of information. This thing seems to be able to astral project all over the world, draw on all this knowledge, draw on all sorts of things going on. It had a lot of prophetic, uh, like, stories that it was going to tell when it was going to come back, which... Yeah, and it also had these strange interests that you normally don't see in folklore involving ghosts. Things like culture, religion, where society is going. I almost wonder if... Like, it, it, they encountered some sort of extra-dimensional being that had taken an interest in this world. That this cave may have been a portal to somewhere, and it somehow drew their attention by shooting this animal. That something from within there came to investigate, found the house, was bitter about about it, did exact a degree of, uh, did exact a degree of revenge but then became more interest in the world, became interest, and I almost wonder if the marriage had stopped was something that was going to be bad for the girl and she was trying to protect her. Ultimately, I can't say exactly what I think it is, but I don't think it was a ghost. I don't think it was a witch. I think it may have been something something else more beyond that. We're just not quite sure what it is. Hey guys, thank you for tuning in to our most recent uh, case file. And you may have noticed something different. Me and uh, Marcus are trying out speaking with more of our more natural speaking voice instead of just reading voices. Yeah, I'm trying not to seem so manic-y when I'm talking. So let us know if you like it or if you prefer the old way we're doing it. And if you guys like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to help get this video out there to other people. And if there's a video that you guys want us to do or a topic you want us to discuss, leave it in the comments below. We love feedback from you guys. We're always giving feedback to our supporters that leave comments below. But don't forget, keep believing. Because we'll keep listening.